This entitled mom thinks her son is an Olympic swimmer. She's in for the shock of her life when everyone starts laughing as he starts drowning. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamped show. Hello, I'm 15 years old and this happened a year ago during summer vacations. I'm a skilled swimmer due to me being in class since I was five years old and I really enjoy swimming. During the summer vacations, my father tends to sign us, father, little sister and me, into swimming classes on the university he studied in. This is a service that the university has and, well, that wasn't our first time there, so the professors recognized us. One professor I really liked was named Lewis. He was the professor for the advanced class where I was in and he always defended me from the 17 year olds that were in the class as well. But enough backstory. This happened almost at the end of the course and we were having a special class on the deep pool. This was 7 meters deep, 23 feet, and was my favorite because I like diving. After the class had ended, the professor let us do whatever we wanted for 30 minutes, time that the other classes, greens and medium, were using to have normal classes. Only the advanced class had this special class. On that time, I started diving and having fun while swimming. But 10 minutes before the end, a woman approached the professor with her son. He was like 13 or 14, so my age, and started asking why I was there. Lewis started explaining that I was part of that class. The woman getting angry said, K, Karen, L, Lewis, and D, my dad. Sorry, but why is he on this class? Pointing at me. Oh, he's one of my students. He studies in this class. Then if he is there, can my son be as well? He also wants to have fun. I need to check that. The pool is somewhat dangerous. Do you have your receipt? Yes, here it is. Handing a piece of paper. Sorry, but he is supposed to be in the green class. I'm afraid he's not skilled enough to be here. But he is there. He can't be much better than my son. Sorry, but he's been coming to this class here since he was 10. But he's not good enough to be there. How dare you say he's better than my son? He's so fat. I am a little fat. I was 78 kilos, 172 pounds, and my height was 170, 5'5". Five five. Sorry, if you're here to insult my student, I will be asking you to leave. Oh, so now I'm insulting your student. I'm the customer here and you will let my son have fun. Sorry, that's not possible. I will ask you to return him to his class. The mother was really upset and started talking crap of the professor while leaving. But her son turned back and ran into the pool, not realizing how deep it was. And he was now two meters deep in the pool, having problems to get out. He had no ability on the kicking. Before we reacted, we all started laughing at his inability to swim. But then we realized the kid was really drowning and was sinking. I was not the hero of this story though. Another student, I'll call him Alex, dived in and rescued the kid that was now crying in the floor after being thrown out of the pool. How dare you touch my son, you freaking pee! Ma'am, your son was drowning. He wasn't. He is completely capable of swimming. Then what about letting him in again and seeing how much he can survive? He starts laughing. They were 17 year olds that had fun with seeing how a kid was drowning. But I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't laughing inside as well. Y you pointing at me. You were the reason my son almost drowned. You make it seem so easy. That's why my son jumped into the pool. Sorry, but you and your son have to leave now. I'll be calling security if you keep this up. No, I want him banned from this place. He is a bad influence for kids his age, making them think swimming is easy. All the classes had already ended by now and the tantrum she was making could be heard by everyone. So my dad, that always comes for me, approaches her and asked, is everything okay here? Who the frick are you? I'm here for my son. I climbed out of the pool and walked in the direction of my dad. Wait, is he your son? Yes, he is. Look at what he did with mine. He almost drowned. Is that true? Asking to the professor and me. No, the kid jumped into the pool without permission. Okay then, it's not my kid's fault, so I'll be leaving. Thanks for taking care of him, to my professor. Not a problem. Are you really going to let him go? His son almost killed mine. You told us he was an experienced swimmer, so why was he drowning? I said to feel the situation while leaving. That's all. As my knowledge goes, 
because she was banned from the place and her husband had to come and apologize for his son to be permitted again in the facilities. That was my only experience with a Karen because they are not so common here. Wait, a place where entitled parents are not so common? Guys, I think we gotta all move there. Just don't let the entitled parents know. Then we could just leave them all stuck with each other and you know, they can sort themselves out. Outcast. Mila, my wife. Chanel, my wife's older sister. Mammon, my wife's biological father. Becky, my stepmother-in-law. Kathy, my wife's mother. I suppose it's only fair to start from the beginning. My wife was born into a family where her mother already had a child from a previous relationship. Mammon was with Kathy during the whole pregnancy and married Kathy three months after Chanel was born. Four years later, Mila was born and everything seemed nice ish. The problems began before Mila was able to recognize them. Mammon is technologically intelligent, but morally bankrupt. The man has worked for some big name computer companies. TP, Macrohard, and Mel. In all three businesses, the man embezzled from them. My mother-in-law loves the phrase, keeping up with the Joneses for him. When asked why he did all this, he would reply, for the family. But there was absolutely no reason as the family was living very comfortably. When Mila was almost eight years old, her father left them. As it turns out, he was sleeping with the secretary, Becky, on the side. Even had the audacity to bring Becky to his home under the guise of a business dinner, where his then still wife fed her. After Christmas of 2004, he packed up his assets and left. At the time, Kathy was a stay at home running a big horse rescue. When he left, the rescue went under. They were providing desperately needed medical attention for broken racehorses. The rescue was so big, they even at one point took care of Secretariat's grandson, Classic Brat. Along with abandoning the rescue and his wife, he left behind his two daughters. The divorce was finalized in June or July of 05. In that same year, around November, Mammon and Becky, who'd been living further north from where Mila lived, came to take Mila, eight years old, and Chanel, 11, for a weekend. Poor Chanel wanted nothing to do with him and locked herself in the bathroom. Kathy had to coax her out because Mammon was threatening to call the cops because it was his weekend. And according to him, it was against the law for his daughter to refuse to go with him. After leaving Kathy's home with the girls, the duo blindsided them with the surprise that the girls were going to be the flower girls of their wedding in Texas that they were driving down to at that moment. Mila had no clue as to what was going on as she was an autistic eight-year-old who still loved her dad very much. Chanel was furious. Once down there, Chanel and Mila were told to call Becky mum and all of Becky's family that they were meeting there for the first time by family titles like grandpa and auntie. Both girls refused and Mammon got ticked at the two young girls. Later the girls would be told that they were rude and that they were treating them like a doormat and wiping their feet all over them to try and guilt trip them. Mila and Chanel never called Becky mum. Shocker. After the wedding, the girls were to stay at Grandpa's house, Becky's dad, where Mammon gave away Chanel's flower girl dress to Becky's niece. In Mammon's words, Chanel didn't deserve the dress if she was going to act this way and that he was going to give it to someone that deserved it. Funny ending story. Kathy gave Mammon 24 hours to get a U-Haul and all his things out or she would burn the rest. Mammon called her bluff. It was a great fire that night with the old Christmas tree, office chair, Irish wool sweaters and suits. Kathy got overexcited and burned everything under an old oak tree. Needless to say, the oak tree caught fire and Kathy slipped on the ice with a beer in hand, trying to put out the fire. Not only was he the reason why the family broke up, I mean, according to this side of the story at least, but he then expected them to be like, hey, this strange woman is now mom, okay? Of course they're not going to be on board with that. How oblivious do you have to be to be so unempathetic to your children's feelings in that situation? I meant to punish them and take away the dress. Like, it's so messed up. It's like, you're the bad guy here. And yet you're somehow trying to make your preteen children the bad guys? I mean, who does that? This happened a few years ago during a family trip to London. So the dialogue isn't 100% accurate. I didn't do anything directly, but my mother, a fierce and sometimes petty woman, did. Cast his entitled mum, EM, her two sons, aged around six to nine, EK1 and two, my mother, MM. 
It was a warm July morning, and we waited about 45 minutes before the scheduled changing of guards at Buckingham Palace. We were towards the front of one of the gates, but there were a lot of tourists packed there at this point, since the guards were about to change any minute. My family was happy chatting amongst themselves, when all of a sudden, EM, EK1, and EK2 started shoving and screaming to get to the front. They ended up right behind us with EK1 and 2 behind my mother. EK1 and 2 could not stand still. They kept shoving and pushing into my mum while EM was still on the phone. The kids were also eating snacks and spilling some on my mum since they were moving so much. After about five minutes of them being there, my mum was fully irked and turned towards them. Hello? Could you two please stop moving so much? There are so many people here and it's hot, but you guys keep bumping into me. EK1 and 2, blank stare while stammering an incoherent response. EM finally notices what's going on. What's wrong? Your kids are moving around and bothering us. Could you get them to stop? Oh, EK1 and 2, they're fine. They've been waiting here for a while and kids get antsy. No, they're not fine. Please just get them to stand still, okay? EM eye rolls. Sure, whatever. EM goes back to talking on the phone without saying anything to her kids, while EK1 and 2 continue to squirm and begin whining. Mommy charge, when's it going to start? Mom, I'm hungry. When's dad gonna get here? EM then waves them off and continues to talk on the phone. EK1 and 2 then start to shove some more and fight, which causes us to bump into the people around us. Everyone's shooting dirty looks at these kids, and I hear other families complaining about them. At this point, my mom has a far away, angry look in her eyes, like she's trying to calm down, but her patience has almost been pushed to its limit. It all comes to a head when the two kids shove each other too hard and push my mom forward hard. Thankfully, my dad and the packed crowd prevented her from falling on the ground, but she would have otherwise and was ticked. My mom turns back at the kids. Stop moving. I have asked you nicely before, but you haven't done that. Just stop moving. EK1 and 2 look petrified and staring blankly. Do you understand? You can wait and stand still like everyone else here. Entitled mom sees my mom talking to them again and gets off the phone. Excuse me, is there a problem here? Yes, there, gesturing to EK1 and 2. The problem. I've asked you to control your children, but they just shoved me. Get them to stay still. Excuse you, we've been waiting here a while and you know kids get bored. My kids are fine. No, my family and everyone else here have been waiting for at least 40 minutes, while you all shoved past to get here just minutes ago. They've been pushing each other and the crowd, littering food and being rude to everyone who's actually been waiting. So they need to learn to stay still. Well, my kids are well behaved and we've been waiting like everybody else. Yo, we've been good and not rude. Leave us alone. My mom in a loud, irritated voice staring directly at the kids. No, how about you two leave us alone? Just stop bothering us and don't move around. She turns around and in the process brushes against EK1 and 2. EK1 and 2 shocked my mum talk back and started crying and whining. Mom, she pushed us. Excuse you, could you not talk to my kids? You're scarring them and you pushed us. Well, they're scarring me. They've pushed me several times already. You know, if they weren't here, everyone would be having a great time. Well, I... Well, whatever. You need to figure out how to discipline your kids on your own. My mum then turned around. EM was speechless and quickly took her kids by their hands, running towards the back. Another family nearby told us that EM and her kids were something else and thanked my mom for speaking out. Thankfully, we got to watch the guards and have a nice vacation after. Honestly, good on that mum for standing up for herself. How often do you feel stuck in one of those situations where there's just some bratty kids doing something stupid and you're like, I can't just rouse on these kids. Even if they're doing something dumb, I'm gonna look like the bad guy. Plus, you don't want that kind of conflict with the parents. Well, she did what everyone else around her was thinking and everyone else was better because of it, so good on her. 
Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.